Good evening, everyone. This is Evangelist Angela Richardson, and today I have a teaching for you today that God has given me. Before I get started, I'm going to try to invite some people. Let me see, can I find some people? Well, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get a word of prayer before I get started. Father God, in the name of Jesus, again, that we come to the throne of mercy and grace. Lord, we pray right now that everybody comes on this live or that, or that those that listen to the replay, Lord, that they would know that God is a restorer. He will restore all the years that the locusts and the canker worm and the pummel worm have take, uh, stolen from us. He will restore us back to our to uh, uh, back to back, he will restore us back to him right now in Jesus' name. If we have walked away and left him, he is able to restore us back to him in Jesus' name. And Lord, we just thank you right now for the word that's going forth in Jesus' name. Amen. So the subject I'm going to teach about today is God the Restorer. God the Restorer. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started, and those that come on, they can just catch it as they go. Um, the scripture I'm going to use today is Deuteronomy 30, verse 3 through 13. Um, but I'm not going to read it all. I'm just going to read a specific scripture out of there. Um, the one that I need out of there. I'm not going to read the whole. It's a long scripture, but I'm not going to read it all. But I'm going to read, um, say, God will restore everything you lost. He will have compassion on you. He'll come back and pick up the pieces from all the places where you were scattered. So God wants to restore us. He don't want us, you know, to um, to remain the way we are. He wants to restore. Um, if we've fallen uh, away from God, he wants to restore us back in him. And in Joel 2 and 25, it said, the Lord says, I will give you back what you lost. The swarming locusts, the hopping locusts, the stripping locusts, and the cutting locusts. It it." It was I who sent this great army destroying against you. So God said, whatever the enemy has stolen from you, he's going to give it all back. You know, he's going to restore whatever you lost. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just do the lesson. I got some testimony that I can tell that's at the end that I'm going to tell you how God restored some things in me and my husband's life that the enemy has stolen from us. Hey, brother, with with uh LC, how you doing? Yeah, that God, that um, the enemy has stolen some things from us, and um, how God restored it back even better than it was before. But I'm gonna get on in the lesson. I'm not gonna get ahead of myself. I'm just gonna start from the lesson. So I looked up the word "restore" in Merriam-Webster Dictionary, and it means to give back, return, put back into existence or use. So uh, restore means to give it back. You know, when God restored, he don't just give us back what we had. He give us back more than we had. He's a God of more than enough. That's who God is. You know, so in the so I'm looking at him. So I said, I want to look at the biblical meaning of the word restore. So I looked that up as well. And it said, biblical meaning is to receive back more that, than has been lost to the point where the final state is greater than the original condition. And that's like with Job. You know, Job lost all that he had. You know, his children, his stock, all his, he lost everything. He, and said, hey, Prophet Selena, how you doing? He lost everything. Hey, hey, Pastor C, how you doing? He lost Everything Job lost everything that he had, but and you know, even his wife, because he told she told him to curse your God and die. He said, Oh no, I'm not gonna curse my God and die. You know what I'm saying? But he was able to Job was able to get back double for his trouble. You know, he was able to get back double of everything he had. So God is a restorer, you know, whatever you lost, you know, in your lifetime from you know, from um, when you got before you got saved all the way up until you into the now that you're saved. God is able, able to restore everything that was lost, everything that the devil have taken from us. God is able to restore it back even more, you know, and that's I mean, I'll get excited just talking about it because God is a God of the multiplication. He multiplies what he gives back to us. You know, he just don't give us back what he, we gave. He gave us more than we gave. He multiplies it. But let, uh, before, I, before I get too excited, let me get back on my lesson. Say, so in other words, rest restoration is getting it back multiplied. And the only person that can do that for us is God. God is the only one can multiply it for us. You know, 
We can, we can try to do it, but we can't do it. Not in our own strength. Only God can do the multiplication. Say, God will restore everything that we have lost. Everything the devil has stolen from you. Everybody's on his line. Everything the enemy has stolen from you. He has to give it all back to you and then some. He know he can't just give us back what, what he stole. He got to give us and, and then some more. He got to give us more than he stole. Said in Proverbs 6 and 31 said, but if he is found and we know it was the enemy that stole it, he shall restore sevenfold. He got to give us back seven times of what he stole. That's even more than double. He said he shall give all of the substance of his house. So if he got to uh, go through whatever he's stolen from us, he got to, he got to ramshackle his house and, and, may, and may not have nothing left in his house. He still got, he's got to give it back. He can't hold it because God said he cannot hold it. He said uh, we are to exercise our authority by decreeing and declaring the word of God. And the enemy has to pay back everything that he tried to steal from you with interest. He got to pay interest on what he stole. So, you know, when he's, you know, but we got to, we got to walk in that authority that, that God has given us. We got to decree and declare the word of God over our lives or whatever um, the enemy has stolen from us. Maybe he's stolen from our, our health. You know, maybe we're not doing too good in our bodies, but we don't have to receive that because God said in his word that by his stripes we are healed. So we we don't have to be sick because those um, 39 lashes that was put over Jesus was for every sickness, every disease that we could go through. So we don't have to be sick. So we don't have to receive the, the diagnosis from the doctor just because he said you got cancer and you may not have such and such uh, amount of uh, what weeks to live or months to live. Uh-uh, I ain't got to receive that. Uh-uh, because I, I, I serve a God who says that by his stripes I'm healed, so I don't have to be sick just because the doctor had declared it. So a lot of times what we do is when the doctor give us these diagnoses, we just start just losing out, you know, I'm just being real. We just start losing our minds, you know, we start, that's all we thinking about, what, what the doctor said. Well, the doctor said this, and he said that, and now we're speaking those word curses over ourselves. So what we have to do, we have to, we have to start cur uh, casting down those word curses and come and, and, and get out of agreement what the doctor said and get in, in agreement what the word of God said. So God said in his word that by his stripes we are healed. So whatever you go, go through the word of God, get you some scripture and start decreeing and declaring them over you because God is obligated to honor his word. And he, uh, you know, and you can't, you can't die till God said he get, he get ready for you. I'm just saying, you know, you can't die before your time. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of people that, you know, have gotten all these diagnoses, but they still here. You know, a lot of people that had cancer, you know, now they don't have, they in remission or whatever. They are, or, or better yet, it's gone. They can't find no traces of it, you know, because that's the kind of God we serve. So we got to walk in the authority that God has given us. We can't be scared to say what the word of God says over our situation. No matter what kind of situation it is, we got to speak God's word over it. Now that is the only way we can going to prevail is speak God's word over those situations. He said, God is not going to let the enemy get away with taking from his people. And it will not, God is not going to let the enemy get away with taking from his people and it not be restored to them. He ain't, the enemy ain't getting away with nothing. You know, he, don't you know he got to go to God before he can try anything against you? Just like he did Job. He had to go to God before he can try anything with Job to get God's permission to do anything to Job. He had to do that. And just like he did with, with uh, the enemy does with Job, with Job, he has to go to God before he can try anything with you. But see, but God knows that we're standing and rooted and grinding in the word of God, that we're not going to waver no matter what the enemy throw at us. We're not going to waver. We're going to stand strong on the word of God. Say so many times, Lot has thrown some of some curry balls and our bikes have been against the wall and we didn't know what to do or which way to turn. So he, I mean, it, the things life comes at us, you know, things in life, you know, it comes at us, but we still got to be rooted and grounded in the word of God. I don't care what the doctor says. Uh, oh, you know, cause, um, back in the day when I hurt my back, he was, they was telling me it wasn't, it was not in opera roll. He said he could, it couldn't be fixed. I said, I don't know. I know that ain't right. Uh, uh, cause my word, my word don't say that. My word said by his stripes, I'm healed. 
you know, and I said, and uh, so I went, so I sent a doctor, one doctor, they said first they said they couldn't do nothing, so I went, so I seen another doctor, don't, don't never take that first opinion, you know what I'm saying, you know, with a lot of, don't take the first opinion, get you a second opinion, so I went, got me a second opinion, they said, oh yeah, we can fix that, and guess what? They fixed it, you know what I'm saying. So you know, we we um we I still believe God. I wasn't gonna give up, you know what I'm saying. I'm not gonna give up regardless of well, who's telling me what. If it doesn't line up with what I know, what the Word of God says, I'm not gonna fall for it. I'm gonna still stand on God's word. He said, but whatever the enemy has stolen from us during our lifetime, then he has to give it all back. If he stole your help, then he has to give it all back because according to the Word of God, like I said, by His stripes we are healed. You know, Jesus took 39 lashes for every sickness, every disease that we could ever go through. I don't care about the COVID-19. That because it didn't have a name back then. It got one now or the, uh, uh, the, the other variant, you know, the COVID other variant. It's still included in those 39 lashes. I don't care what whatever disease they come up. It's still included in those 39 lashes. Jesus is not going to come take 39 more for us. He already took those 39. And that was for every sickness, every disease that we could ever go through. So that's that's the point of taking communion. You know what I'm saying? When we're taking um, his body, taking that bread, that represents healing in our bodies. And so that represents those 39 lashes that he took. So we don't have to be sick because it all was put on Jesus. So when we're taking that communion, we're taking healing in our bodies. And when we take in that ju that juice represent his blood, that means Jesus came was a came came became the perfect sacrifice. He only through his death and his resurrection that we could be redeemed back to God because of Adam's sin. You know, Adam, you know, he sinned and him, him and Eve sinned in the beginning. So it took Jesus to shed his perfect blood so that we can be redeemed back to God. So now we can be saved through Jesus' shed blood. He said, so it's so very important that we know the word. You know what I'm saying? Just like um, I was listening to a video a while ago, Apostle Claudette and uh, our prophetess Rashida, by talking about knowing the word. We got to know the word because the enemy come at us. And, you know, a lot of times we might not be able to get to a Bible or whatever. We need to have some word on the inside of our hearts. So we and whatever situation come up, you may not be able to get to your pastor or your, uh, you know, uh, different people in the church. You know what I'm saying? So you got to have the word of God on the inside of you to be able to decree and declare the word of God over yourself. You know, you might be in the midnight hour and you start having uh, maybe um, some problems and you need you need prayer. You know, you might can't wake everybody up. So you better, God said we will better lay hands on the sick and they recover. So, hey, we should be able to lay hands on ourselves and we get healed. You know what I'm saying? And you know, uh, uh, it you know it happens. You know, you you got the Holy Ghost in you. You got the power, the uh, the the dunamis power is on the inside of you. Uh, the, if you got the Holy Ghost, so you have the power to lay hands on yourself, and you shall recover. He said, "We are, we can obtain our healing by decreeing and declaring the word of God over our lives and bodies. We can also I talked up I already talked about communion." We, I mean, communion is so important, you know, over the years it's been taught wrong, you know, because I think it, what it was, was people was just, wasn't really studying it. They were just listening to what other people were saying and they were just going with that. But I did a study on it, a, 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 a very essential study on it. And that's when I came up with what I said, oh my God. So, you know what I'm saying? So I know for a fight when I start when the, the moment I started taking communion, I was able to get off all the medication that I was on when I had my back surgery, all this gap pitting, all these sleeping pills because I couldn't sleep because of the pain. I was able to get off all those medications by taking communion. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm just giving a testimony. You know, if people, if people don't believe it, that's, on, that's between them and God, you know, but I'm going to give that testimony that I was able to come off all those medis medications. I was on hormone medicine. I, I wanted to get off that because it thins your hair and does so many other things to your body. And I asked God about it. He said, get off of it. And I was able to get off of it. So now I'm taking stuff all natural, only vitamins. That's the only thing I take every morning is vitamins. You know, coming from taking maybe uh, 15 to 20 pills to just vitamins every morning. You know that's God. That ain't me. That's God. And, you know, so whenever I God give me the opportunity to talk about this communion, I let people know about this communion that is much more deeper than we realize. 
you know, but I, like I said, I ain't got time to keep, you know, to go in full detail, but I gave y'all some highlights. It said Jesus was whipped with a cat of nine tails, and every time he was whipped, flesh was torn from his body for our sickness and disease. Everyone, don't matter, I don't care what name they come up with, he was already 39 lashes, he was already whipped for it. Sickness and disease were put on Jesus, so we don't have to be sick. It is in your mouth. You have to speak the word of God. It's in your mouth. If you ain't saying nothing, it's because if you ain't getting nothing, it's because you ain't saying nothing. It's in your mouth. You got to speak the word of God over yourself and pray. And God, because God wants us well. God don't want us sick. He don't want us on these high blood pressure pills, which I, I ain't telling you not to take it. Take it until you get healed is what I'm saying. But he that ain't it ain't that ain't his will for us to be no diabetic. That ain't for his will for be all these different diseases. It's not for his will for his his people. His he want his people well and healed because we can work even better and um and do more things for God if we are if we're healthy. You know what I'm saying? So God want us healed. He want us whole. He going to give, and some of us, you know, if maybe we're overweight or whatever, he's going to give, a, if all we got to do is pray and ask him, God, give me the wisdom and the knowledge on what foods I need to eat and what foods I don't need to eat. And the ones he tell you not to eat, don't eat them. You know, you got to have some willpower, some self-control as one of the fruit of the spirit, some self-control not to eat because he want us to have healthy bodies. He want us to live a long time. According to his word in, the, in Genesis, he said he was going to he, he was give us a, a, at least up to 120 years, you know, you know, to live that long. You know, we don't have to just die early just because it may be in the bloodline. Don't mean it has, you have to have what whatever was in your bloodline because it starts with you. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, let me get back to my lesson. So if we have lost finances, then the word of God states in Philippians 4 and 19 that God will supply our every need, such as riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Say he'll supply every need, whatever we need, he going to supply. I don't care. Somebody was saying about the gases. If gas is going up, it get made, it's going to get about 5 or $6 a gallon. Oh well, if it get that get that get that get five or six dollars gallon, guess what? I'm still gonna ride because God gonna gonna make make sure his people got some gas and they cause. I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? So we don't, you know, we're in the world, but we are not of the world. So if we believe and trust in God, we gon' we gon' we gon' ride. When everybody else riding, we gonna ride too. You know what I'm saying? He said right here and say he said he also said in Malachi three and six that if we give our tithes and offering that he will open up the windows of heaven and pour us out blessing that we didn't have room enough to receive. So you know it, it's it's something in, it, it's something it's something to that tithing you know because um, when me and my husband back in the day when we wasn't really when y'all when we first got married we wasn't really doing good it seemed like it rained every day and you know uh, we didn't have the finances coming in. And then, um, we, but we kept tied and we still, we still tied, we sacrificed, we tied, we tied, we tied. Even when we, uh, didn't have the, the, the mobile home anymore, we, we let, let, I let it, we let it go by. We still was tied in and we kept on, we, and then we lost the vehicle. We still was tied in. You know, we didn't stop that. Um, because I mean, we didn't, you, it, it's like this. If you don't, you don't have enough money to pay the car payment. So you, that, that's a seed. You know, so might as well give it as a seed if you ain't got enough money anyway. So why, why, why would you keep it if you don't have enough money anyway to pay that bill? Use it as a seed. So the more seed you sow, the more harvest you will get. And so anyway, we kept so, kept sowing and we kept sowing and sowing. And now, you know, in, in the year or two, 2020, it started in 2020. Um, well, when we moved in this home, I think it was 2018, 19. When we moved in this home, you know, God gave a a better home, a three bedroom, two bath, uh, a a home, nice home in a in a nice subdivision, you know, with a pond in the back and a pond in the front. You know, God replaced it, gave us double, tri 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 triple, you know, more than what we had, and then the vehicle, the vehicle, I, you know, we let it go back because we couldn't afford, you know, couldn't pay for it. You know, so now he's gave me gave us a better vehicle, and not only that, guess what? We, we the vehicle that my husband got for me, we already paid it off, and it was we were supposed to be paying it off in five years. We paid it off in two and a half years. You know, so so God is he's, he's he's multiplying us. You know, you know, and you got to be just you know willing and obedient. He said, if you're willing and obedient, he'll you, he'll eat the good of the land. So what do you got to be? Obedient to what God is telling you. You can't just keep biking up when God is telling you to do this and do that. And you'll say, well, God, 
I'm scared. God, that's not me. That's out of my comfort zone. Well, it's a lot of stuff is out of my comfort zone, but I do it anyway because God is going to bless your obedience when you do what he tells you to do. So if we continue to get our ties to God, he will multiply what is given back to us. He will also... He also said that he would give us favor with him and man. So God's going to give us favor. And guess what? Favor lasts for a lifetime. And just like today, when I, um, no, yesterday when I went to the doctor uh, and they gave me some medication. And so when I went to the pharmacy, they were telling me at the pharmacy that the, my insurance was going to pay for it. They said they ain't going to pay for it to August the 13th. And, and this is the, what, the 21st. And they weren't going to pay for it to August the 13th. I was like, God, I said, now how am I going to do all that? And then. So I asked myself, how much is the medication? They told me like two hundred seventy dollars. I said, Oh Lord, oh they go. I'm gonna have to wait till the 13th. But then this lady gave me this um the med a prescription card, and so I got the card, and she said, Go go use the card. So I used the card, and the pharmacy said, No, that's only gonna take off a little bit. He said, I tell you what, and he began to mash some buttons. And next thing, when he got through. It was $40, and that was the favor of God. I just thank God for that. I said, oh, he said, what about 40 I said, oh, oh yeah, that's all. That's all. I, I got that. $40, oh, yeah, I got that. So it, it just lets you know God has given you favor with man. You know, he gave me favor with the man at um, the pharmacist at Walmart, you know. And, you know, he gave you favor with many people to bless you, you know. And not only that, he's going to bless you as well. He said he will use man to give to give to unto your bosom to bless you abundantly. He will use man to supply whatever we need in our ministries and even in our personal life. You know, I needed that in my personal life. I needed that medication. So he got God had to uh, touch the pharmacist's heart. You know, I don't know what code he put in there, but whatever code he put in there, it went from two seventy to forty dollars. And I thank God for that because I first and the when he when he told me that I said what. And I would walk, he said, well, give me 20 minutes. So I walked around the store. I said, oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I praise the Lord in Walmart. Thank you, Lord, because I know that was God. You know, there's no way in the world I, it, a medicine medication went from $270 to $40. That was nobody but God. Say, so God is the restorer. He's the one that would touch someone's heart to bless you with whatever you need at the time. God's promises are never short. God's promises are never short. His promise are always on time. And it, that was always on time. That was on time. He said he's going to supply my needs so I needed the medication at that time. So guess what? I was able to get the medication. He supplied my need. I'm just using that example. But whatever you need, God is able to do it. He's, he's you know, we, we cannot bankrupt God no matter what. Whatever, you know, we can think of in our minds. We cannot bankrupt God. God, God owns everything. God has you know, everything in the palm of his hand. Whatever you need, just ask God for it. So remember his timing is not like our timing. So when his timing comes to fruition, everyone will see what God is doing in your life. So when God's timing comes to fruition in our lives, everybody going to see it. You know, so when we was telling that testimony about that vehicle, we was I was blown away too. I was like, God, really? You know, and not only that, what he did was he blessed my husband with a bunch of contracts from, you know, from the um, area where he got his business at, he blessed him with some county contracts and some city contracts so we can have that extra money to be able to, to put on, on the vehicle, you know. And uh, so, but I just thank God because I know it was God that opened the door. You know, he put, put your name in other people's minds. You know, people might be thinking about you today, say, you know, thinking about you and, and thinking about calling you. God said, okay, call them. Call them. You know, I want you to bless this person. I want you to bless that person. And that's what they'll do. They'll call you and they and they will be a blessing to you. And not only that, when they bless us, God's, God wants us to bless somebody else. He don't want us to hog it all for ourselves. You know what I'm saying? You know how some of us may get, you know what I'm saying? He, he don't want us to hog it all for ourselves. So if we see somebody else in need, we, we're to sow into them. Or we see in another ministry in need, we're to sow into them. Or whoever, you know, because God is the one that's going to give the increase. So whatever seed we sow, God is going to multiply what he give back to us. So if we, you know, I'm just giving an example. Say, if we sow uh, $20, we may get end up getting $2,000 back. 
hey, uh, Sister Larissa, how you doing? So you, we can't bankrupt God. So if we keep everything in our hands and keep our hands closed, can't nothing get in and can't nothing get out. And my pastor always said a closed mouth won't get fed. So that means if you just if a closed mouth won't get fed is you got to speak what you need into the atmosphere and speak what you need into existence. So if you don't speak it, don't expect nothing. You know what I'm just saying. And if you don't open your hands to let them let your finances get out to bless somebody else, and guess what? Ain't no finances coming back. You know, I'm just being real. Ain't none coming back. If you ain't releasing none, don't be looking for none. I'm just saying. That's that's what the word said. If you ain't if you ain't releasing none, don't be looking for none. That's what the word said. I didn't say it. The word said it. He said, um, if you need restoration in relationships, then God is able to do that as well. God will restore relationships between a mother, daughter, and a father and a son. He will restore relationships. You know, we, we, we I mean, only thing we can do is pray. We can't, we can't, we can't make nobody do nothing. We can't, we can't um, wish nobody to do nothing. Only God can change hearts. God is the person that can change hearts. So God will move on the hearts of our children to remove their hearts of stone and give them a heart of flesh. God is the only one can restore people and make them whole. God is the only one can restore. But God give us prayer. He give us a, 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 a connection with him through prayer. Prayer, fasting, you know, worship. Worship is good, you know, because a lot of times when I go into worship and I begin to hear him talk and I begin to write down what he's saying and he's, he's speaking to me. He, he want to speak to you in prayer. Excuse me. And prayer is just not monologue. It's dialogue. You pray, you listen, and he's talking. He, now he want to talk to you as well. And listen to what he's saying. Write down what he's saying. Ain't no way in the world you can remember what he's saying. Don't even try it. You, ain't no way you can remember all God's saying to you. Write that stuff down. It's so very important. Say, um, God will restore marriages. He will save unsaved spouses and change their hearts and minds. But the saved spouse had to keep praying and speaking the word of God over them. So, you know, if you God has told you to stay in a marriage, you know, and and um and, he, and you're not in any type of abuse. Now, I'm not telling nobody to stay in no relationship that's abusive because I didn't. When God gave me the opportunity, I was out of there. You know what I'm saying? Because my life was on the line. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm saying, if 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 you know, if just it's something that y'all you know, just can't get along or whatever, you know, God wants you to pray for that person, start speaking the word of God over them. And so, you know, God to heal that relationship, God to heal that person, change your, your spouse's heart, you know, move that heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. God is able to, able to want to change them. And so what we have to do, you know, we got to live safe before them, let them see uh, God in us. You know, we can't be cussing and carrying on with them and then talk about God in the next, in the next, in the next voice. That ain't going to work because you ain't drawing nobody with that. You know what I'm saying? You actually drawing them away because they ain't seeing God in you. That's why they ain't trying to run to God. But I'm saying, but anyway, getting back to the lesson. But it's so very important, you know, that the saved spouse live holy and righteous before their spouses. Let them see God in you. And on, if it's a man, honor that man. He is the head of that house, you know. He may not be saved, but honor that man, you know. Treat him with respect, you know, because you will want somebody to treat you with respect, you know. And um, and also it, in the scripture I'm hearing, it said a silly woman, it only it would take a silly woman, a foolish woman to tear up down her own home, you know what I'm saying. So, you know, you uh, pray, you know, and sometimes get with them and say, hey, uh, let's pray together or let's let's read the word together or let's um, worship together. You know what I'm saying? It just something that just, it's going to take something to break the ice. You know, and next thing you know, they then the guys start dealing with them. They say, you know, baby, I read that scripture that I read that chapter today. And I really and I asked God what it meant. And he gave me what the, the interpretation of what it means. So now guess, guess what? God working on them. Next thing you know, your, your whole relationship be um, be restored. Not only God want to work on them. He want to work on you too You know what I'm saying You know how we is women I'm just being real You know he want to work on us as as well You know so when we get You know when that relationship do get healed You know both of us healed You not, not just him healed But we she's healed too So we are both healed So that's what God wants to do Said for the singles that want to be married Are the women that have been married before And the relationship didn't work out now, I was married before two times with some domestic violence jokers. I'm just being real. 
and it didn't work out because guys, I I I wasn't gonna stay there and be abused no more, no longer. I I, I had mm -mm, no, I wasn't staying in that. You know what I'm saying? And you know, but that wasn't what God put together. That was my my choice. I made that choice. I was the one that got in that relationship. I was the one that say I love that person. I was the one, you know, God didn't put it together. I put it together, you know. And so it when it didn't work out, you know, uh, you know, and then when they um was abusive and it didn't work out, I'm like, God, I ain't staying in there. Well, he didn't want me to stay in there. You know, God don't want to stay in no relationships with nobody beating up us up, upside our heads. We walk around here with two black eyes or broke arms or broke legs. You know, God don't want that for us. Don't no um don't he don't want that for us. You know, he that, that ain't what he want. He want us, he will his princesses, he wants us to have the best of everything. He wants us to have the best man of God, but we're gonna have to wait on the man of God now. We can't just keep, just cause we lonely. We can't keep running to people cause we lonely. You know what I'm saying? If we want a man of God, a true man of God, we're going to have to wait on that true man of God. And not only that, we're going to have to allow God to work some things out in us because there's a wound in us that keep attracting us to wounded people. So if you're wounded, you're going to automatically attract to wounded people. And you notice the next, you know, and, and I noticed that when I, I was wounded from my childhood and then I, cause my dad was an alcoholic and the guy, I first guy I married was an alcoholic. He was only cause they doing on the download. But when we got married, that's what I really seen it all was an alcoholic. So that wound from my childhood and followed me to that first marriage, you know what I'm saying? And so, and then after that, I didn't allow God to heal me because I didn't know uh, know about it at that time, how to be healed in that area. So I wasn't healed. So then I gravitated to the next marriage and he was wounded too. So my wound attracted his wound. And now we two wounded people bleeding all over each other. You know what I'm saying? And so what I had to do was when I got out of there, oh, I prayed. I said, oh, God, get me out of this. I promise you ain't got to worry about me no more. And when he got me out of that, I said, Lord, <laughs> I got enough. I'm going to let you do what you need to do. You know what I'm saying? So when I allow God to come deep in my heart and heal those wounds from my childhood, for my dad, you know, and all that stuff that was going on with my childhood. And then when he, I became whole, then God attracted, then I was able to attract somebody that was whole too. You know, a man of God, which my husband is not, a man of God is whole. So not two whole people are together. You know what I'm saying? But there's no way in the world a wounded person going to be able to track a whole person. It is not going to happen because a wounded person going to track another wounded person. Because one time I began to ask God, God, is there a sign on my forehead that I keep end up with these knuckleheads? And, and God was saying, you wounded. Wounded people attract wounded people. And so there's no way in the world you're going to get somebody whole and you wounded. You're going to have to allow God to come in and heal your heart. All those deep places in your heart, that stuff that you got hid and you say, God, I don't want to think about it anymore. It's too painful. I just want to forget about it. He, God ain't going to want to forget about it. He want to go deep in those areas and heal you from those areas so they don't come up again when he give you his man of God. That foolishness won't come up again in that relationship. So you got to be healed in that area. So if God is bringing it up to you now, he wants you to be healed in that area. There's no way around it. You got to be healed because he's not going to give you his man of God for you to, to for you to corrupt. I'm just being real. Or he ain't going to give, you know, vice versa for you to corrupt. He want to heal people together. So when you when you two heal people together, you're dynamic in marriage. Your marriage is 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 popping. You know your children is good. Your your grandchildren is good. And next thing you know, you you you're walking together in agreement as one. And y'all have a ministry that's popping. You know God is in the in your ministry. You're being led by the Holy Ghost, and you're moving in in power. That's what God wants with these marriages. You know what I'm saying? 
I, I, I don't want to, I, I know that was God for me to go there. But anyway, but God wants us whole and healed. So allow God to do what he want to do in you. If you don't, you're going to keep running out into knuckleheads after knuckleheads and after knuckleheads. I'm just saying. You're going to keep running into them. If you don't allow God to heal the marriage in your, in your heart, you're going to keep running into the same kind of personality with a different name. They may be John, Bill, and, and Sue. Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying. They have different names, but you're going to see they're going to have that same personality. They're going to they gonna be still they gonna be still having that same manipulative personality that's want to manipulate you. You know what I'm saying? Want to put their hands on you like they, you know, like they your 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 daddy. Or, you know what I'm saying? But so it's so very important that we allow God to heal us in those areas. If you don't want to keep running into them same walls, allow God to heal you in those areas. He said, but you have to wait on God. You know, like I don't care how long you get, long you get, lonely, lonely you get. <laughs> don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. I don't care who calling your phone, who on in your inbox. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. Uh uh. He ain't the one. Cause guess what? The enemy always send a counterfeit. Before God said in the real one. But you got to know the difference between the two. You got to know the difference between a counterfeit and the real thing. So I, I just, my advice is be led when it comes to obtaining a significant other or a spouse. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Because if not, you're going to suffer. You know, there's always consequences to our actions. Got to get us out of it, but it's still consequences to our edge. He got me out of those relationships, but I still had to go through some consequences. I still had to go through some healing and, you know, some, you know, he counseling with the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? I still had to go through that. Say so God can restore any, everything that we've lost and then some. God really wants to restore whatever we need him to. But you must have faith in God and take him at his word. So we must have faith in God and take him at his word, uh, regardless of. You know, what else is going on in life? We got to have faith in God and take him at his word because he's true to his word. God don't lie. He's a God that can't lie. Now, we can lie, but God ain't going to lie. He ain't going to lie about nothing. And we, and we as the men and women of God, we need to strive to not be lying, to walk. We need to be walking in honesty and integrity in every area of our life. We don't need to be falling, you know, be just doing something. You know, we don't just need to be doing anything. We don't need to be need to carrying ourselves in any kind of way. We need to live a holy, holy and righteous lifestyle because the word of God said only the pure in heart shall see God and plus keep our heart pure. If you got to forgive somebody, go ahead and forgive those people. Release those people. Let those people go. Ain't no use to keep holding on to people. Let them go. They, they don't go on with their life doing whatever, you know, messing up somebody else's life. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, but. You forgive those people. Forgive yourself. You know, go ahead and forgive yourself. You know, we all did it. I did it. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I didn't know no better. I thought I did, but I was in my worldly mind, my worldly um, uh, wisdom. I was in my worldly wisdom. I thought I knew better, but I didn't. And I made a mess. So, but I forgave myself because, guess what? God gave me a man of God. So, you know, now I'm in godly wisdom, you know. What I'm saying, so it's so very important that you allow God to do whatever He want to do in you, and whatever He's uprooting, let Him uproot it. Don't try to hold it. Don't try to fight Him. Just let Him do what He want to do in you. And um, like I said, I was I was telling my testimonies on the way that God had restored so many things in my life. God had restored relationships in my life. And I just thank God for it. I thank God for what he's doing in my life, you know, because um, I, I'm not fighting him. He Whatever he, he showed me, that's me. I ain't going to deny it. If he showed me something and I said, well, Lord, yeah, you're right. That's me. You know what I'm saying? Just be real. He already know what he already know you. He already know everything about you. He already know who you ain't forgive. He already know who you're mad at. He already he already know that. So you might as well come clean with him because he already know your state, your state. You know what I'm saying? He already know your state. You know what I'm saying? So I tell people to always get real with, be real with God. Just be real with him because he know already. But he wants that relationship with you so you can be intimate, have an intimate relationship with you, that one-on-one -on -one relationship. So just be real with him. 
Yeah, if you say, yeah, I, so God, if I got a problem with forgiving so-and-so or my ex-husband, Lord, I got a problem forgiving my ex-husband. Lord, I need your help with that situation. Lord, give me more grace to be able to forgive my ex-husband. And guess what? He will. He give you more grace to be able to forgive. And next time when you see him, you won't feel no funny feeling in your stomach or you won't be feeling no, no type of way. You'll be, you, you, cause you're healed in that area. You know, you'll be treating him nice. You know what I'm saying? So God will help you in that area. Say if you, if God has restored, I'm going to give you some more testimonies. If God has restored our finances. And long, like I said, we've been putting seed in the ground. If you don't put no seed in the ground, how are you going to expect the harvest? It's just like a, with a farmer. If he's going to plant corn, if he go out there and plant uh, two, two um, uh, corn seeds, and he can go back when the time coming to uh, harvest the corn, and he expect the whole plant, whole, uh, whole field of corn, he out of luck because he ain't planted but two seeds. You know what I'm saying? He ain't going to get no whole plant. He ain't going to get no whole... Um, no whole um, harvest of it because he only planted two seeds so that's all he gonna see he may see maybe um, uh, two stalks of it you know cause uh, you know the ears of corn had plenty plenty of corns on it but that may that may be all he see but if you and you got to plant you got to sow you got to that's the only way you gonna get your harvest is through sowing sowing and reaping is the only way you're gonna receive in the harvest and, uh, and I just thank God for what he's doing in our lives, you know, because we're being obedient with my husband. When he goes out to clean carpet, a uh, guy is using him mightily. Um, he was telling me the testimony the other day when he out, when I was cleaning his carpet, this 86 year old lady, and he began to talk to her about the Lord. And she said she was, she was good. You know, I'm good. I've been doing good things all my life. He said, no, that ain't what I'm asking you. I'm asking you is you saved. And she said, no. He said, well, can I leave you to lead you to Christ? And she said, yeah. So he was able to lead her to Christ. So, you know what I'm saying? God, you know, um, God want to use us. Be willing for God to use you. We don't always have to stand by the, behind a pulpit, which it, we know, which is we will in, on certain incidents. I'm not saying we won't on certain incidents. But, you know, what I'm saying is when we going out in these different stores, going to Walmart, going to get the nails done, going, you know, different shopping for clothes. God's going to give us opportunities to speak into people's lives because I was in the doctor's office yesterday getting my allergy shots. And this lady came in there and she was um, she was um, moved, just recently moved from Florida and her insurance was, you know, for everything was down there in Florida. And so she wanted to get seen because she had a. a, a a, a spider bike on her leg, which I didn't know it at the time. I was just sitting there, you know, listening to the conversation, and and so so later on, as she left there, they we couldn't see her because the insurance wasn't right, and so she left there. So I went to Walmart yesterday, you know, to pick up my medication, and then I saw the lady. At first, I walked by her, then I said, "Lord, said no, go back." So I walked back, went back, and went down the aisle where she was. And I say, hey, didn't I just see you in the doctor's office? She said, yeah. I said, what was you in there for? She said, because of a spider bite. She had a little bite on her leg with the little pus and the little red mark on her leg. And I said, um, do, do you care if I pray for you? She said, no, I, I like prayer. So I prayed for her right there in the aisle in the middle of Walmart. I wasn't all loud. Let everybody know what you're doing. I, you know, I, you know, I did it between me and her and I laid hands on her leg and I prayed for the prayer of faith. And then I said, amen. And he, amen. First thing she wanted to know, well, what church you belong to? She said, because I, I, I ain't been, I, you know, I'm, I ain't talking about nobody's denomination, but she said, because these Baptist churches I, I've been going to ain't laying no hands on nobody. I'm not, that's exactly what she said. She said, so what church you belong to? So I told her what church I belong to. I said, look us up on Facebook. She said, okay, I will. You know what I'm saying? She said, because I believe in laying hands on the sick. I said, because the ministry that we belong to, we believe, we, we believe in laying hands on the sick and they shall recover. Not because of Angela's power, because of the Holy Ghost power that's living on the inside of me. You know what I'm saying? And so God has given us that authority that we can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's instant and sometimes it's over a period of time. You know, and so when I left there, when I went on, got my stuff and checked out, when I left there, I said, Lord, the prayer that I prayed over that lady's leg, let her wake up in the morning and not see a bite there that everything on her leg would be healed in Jesus name. And I went on, you know what I'm saying? And maybe one day I go back in Walmart again, I'll see her. She said, Hey, 
She gonna, she gonna be, she gonna recognize me. Hey, come here. Let me tell you something. You know what I'm saying? So you know, it ain't me that's doing it. It's God that's doing it. But He's doing it through us. You know, the Holy Spirit is is the one that's doing the healing. So God wants us to. He wants us to be available to whatever He has for us to do. And God is restored. Like you said, if you lost anything, whatever you lost, God is able to restore it back. And he, you're going to even get more than double. He said when you know it was the enemy that stole it, he had to give you back sevenfold and more. So I, that's all God wanted me to tell you today, that God is restored. He restored relationships. I, I, I can testify relationships he restored in my life. I can testify about the finances he restored in my life. Um, even he told me to open a business in the middle of a pandemic. I was like, God, really? A business? Are you serious? He said, yeah. Okay, so I look, because I love crafts and making things. So he said, you love, that's your desire. You love, that's a, you have a passion for that. So I want you to make a business doing that. So I, that's what I did, and God's been blessing it. So, you know, he will restore whatever you need. I don't care what it is. Don't Nothing is too small that God can't restore it. Nothing is too large that God can't restore it. He, he's, he's, he's the only one that can change people's hearts. He's the only one can change people and make them whole. He's the only one can do it. But God is doing it. I see him every day. I see him working and moving and, you know, in my life, not only in my life, in other people's lives. So God is there for us. We, uh, we need him. You know, I, I don't know nobody that don't need him because uh, I know for a fact that when those alarm clocks wake, come, turn on in the morning time, it ain't the alarm clock that's waking us up, but it's God. God is, is shaking me, saying, Angela, it's time to get up. It's time to get up. Not no alarm clock because there's plenty of alarm clocks were still going today, and a lot of people didn't get up. But God has allowed us to get up, and he gave us another day to get it right. You know what I'm saying? But that's all I wanted to say today, that God is a restorer. So he said he'll restore the years. You know, and a lot of us think, we, a lot of us, I'm going to say this because I just heard this. God, a lot of us think we're too old to be used by God. A lot of us think we're too young to be used by God. We are, that's neither or. We're, we're never too young to be used by God, and we're never too old to be used by God. God can, if he used Abraham, he was what, what 100, almost 100, and Sarah, 90 something. If he can use them, don't you think he can use you? You know what I'm saying? And if he used Samuel when he was a babe, you know, when he was a little child, you know, a young child, and he he called Samuel, don't you to be his prophet? Don't he think he can use little children as well? So, you know, there's it's plenty of um plenty of examples in the Bible who got who a guy used young 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 people when he called David, David was a young lad. Look, you know, he had to go through years before he became king. So, you know, Joseph was young, you know, he to get where he was at with the uh, second in command of Pharaoh. So, you know, you, you were never too old or never too young to be used by God. You just have to be willing, you know, willing to be used by God. But anyway, that's all I'm going to say today. I pray someone has gotten some out of this lesson because this truly was powerful, especially when he gave it to me. Let, let you know that God is restored whatever you need. God can restore it. You know, don't, I mean, like I said, if God has told you, told you to stay in that marriage, you stay, you know, and you can pray and you fast. Start, hey, Prophet Sinoana, how you doing? Start anointing. You know, I'm from the old school, you know what I'm saying? I was taught from some, from, you know, some of the old mothers, you know, get you some anointing or start anointing, anoint some things, you know, anoint, they, you know, it's the shoes, put some oil in the shoes. You know, start anointing things, you know, that they, that they put their hand on around the house. You know, God is able to do anything but fail. He's, he's able to do anything. I don't care what it is. He's able to do anything. I don't care what it is. He's able to do anything. I'm going to say it one more time. I don't care what it is. He's able to do anything. And I want you to know before I get off is God is not mad at us. He loves us. He loves us so much. But he loves us too much to leave us in our mess. I'm just get, being real. He ain't going to leave us in our mess. You know, he wants us to grow more in him. He wants us to give our life to him. He wants to grow more in him and continue to move forward in him. That's what he wants for us. You know, he wants to bless us. He wants to be abundantly blessed that we don't have to worry about anything, that all our bills are paid off in full. 
And we owe, he don't want us to owe nothing to no man. He wants us to all our bills to be paid off in full. And so now we can use what we what, what we have that come into our home to help build up his kingdom, to help start ministries, you know what I'm saying? To help start, you know, you know, maybe, maybe the ministry you went you in, maybe they finna, hey, uh, Reverend Vivian, how you doing? Maybe it's the ministry that you're in, they get ready to build. So then now you can you won't have to be robbing from Peter to pay Paul to pay your bills and now you have ex that excess to be able to help build up the kingdom of God that's what God wants for his people for us to be blessed you know he don't want us to be looking poor in the world you know what I'm saying he want his people abundantly blessed but like I said it's in your mouth and it's in your obedience and if you ain't speaking nothing that's why ain't nothing happening if you ain't being obedient that's why ain't nothing happening I'm just saying, if you hadn't did the first thing God told you to do, I'm just saying, you know, if you, if you, if you feel like you're stuck in a rut and you don't know which way to go, then go back and ask God, say, God, what was that first thing you told me to do? Reveal it to me so I can do it. So now I can get back in proper alignment with you. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times we're praying for God to do this and God to do that, God to do this, God to do that. And God said, mm. they started praying for me to do this and do that, but they ain't did what I told them the first time, you know. And that, a lot of times that's why God ain't moving. It's because you ain't did the first thing he told you to do. You know, so whatever it is, if it's uncomfortable, do it anyway. If you're fr afraid, do it anyway. If you're fearful, do it anyway. Joyce Meyer said, do it afraid. But, you know, but do it anyway. But God, cause God wants to bless us. You know, I don't know how I don't know how else to explain, but God really wants to bless us. But it's gonna take walking in obedience. It's gonna take opening your mouth and speaking what the word of God says over yourself, over your family. It's gonna take all that. And you're gonna have to do it. You know, you're gonna have to do it. You know, you're going to have to be obedient. You can't keep telling him no. Because if you keep telling him no, guess what? He'll go find somebody else to use. And then you'll be on the outside looking in the window like, Lord, I could have been there. He said, yeah, you could have been there, but you, you refused to move. So, but anyway, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, I'm not going to keep talking on and on. That's all I'm going to say. I pray someone has got something out of the lesson. I pray that y'all will have a blessed rest of your day. If it just came on the line, go back and look at the beginning because God wants to tell you something, okay, that he is a restorer to whatever else, whatever you need that you need restored in your life, that he's going to restore it. You know, his timing is not like our timing. He got to work on those people. You know, it, 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 it ain't going to happen. He didn't work on us overnight. So it's going to take a while, you know what I'm saying? But he's going to do it. You know, just have the faith and trust him. Because I was listening to that other video and I kept hearing a song. The song of the Lord, I guess it came to me. Uh, um, um, what I was saying was, God, I trust you. God, I was just saying it over and over. God, I trust you. God, I trust you. God, I trust you. So when we saying that we trust God, that means we're going to keep our hand out of it, right? And let God do what he do. I'm just saying. But anyway... Uh, I love y'all. Y'all have a blessed rest of y'all day.